Hey guys, how are you? Julian here from Spartan Alliance, just here with Prosper on the Online Prosperity Show. Uh, today's topic, talking about extreme leadership and I uh, guess taking your business from where you are now to where you want to go and just exactly how over the next coming months we'll actually go through exactly how to get from there to here uh, and how you are the one that's leading the group in your business. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I brought you the Spartan himself, Jillian. Jillian, how you doing, my man? Yeah, good, thank you. Thanks for having me on again. Absolutely. This is a sequel to, we're now starting to be Americans, huh? You know, you, you've got a part one and part two. So let's call this the Spartan two and a half episode. Where, yeah. <laughs> where we're basically um, going to be talking about how you as a business person, are in the company building business and yeah. um, obviously you're there to help other businesses become successful and you also need to help people and empower entrepreneurs to do the same and you've always had a history in building successful uh, businesses and relationships that actually benefit um, you know others there so you've yeah. come in packing a bit of heat right there um, you know with what you've been up to since the last time we spoke tell us a little bit about what has sort of changed within your business, um, you know, in the past three or so months that we last spoke? Yeah, so um, like I said, thanks for having me on again. But you're lucky you bang on in regards to, you know, the, the biggest thing that we've been doing over the last probably 10 years of business is building relationships. And, and what I feel is a lot of people in, relation, in business have this win-lose mentality. So for them to win, someone else has to lose or, you know, they have to get ahead, but for me, it's a winning situation. So probably the last three months has probably been uh, the worst three months of my company's history, but the best in regards to where we are now and moving forward. So uh, financially, it's been the worst in, in, in history. So I say that with a smile. Um, I'll probably, towards the end of the show, I'll explain why there's still a smile on my face. Uh, but yeah, so, so I guess the, you know, the message for today is just to understand who you need to be within your business. And even if you've been in business for 10 years, um, things can happen that, that may, or, may or may not be within your control, but there's definitely things you can do to control the outcome of, of the situation. So um, yeah, the message today is all about extreme ownership of, of where you're at and, and how to get out of that. So. Absolutely. So within business, um, as entrepreneurs, what happens, uh, uh, Julianne, is we assume the role of leadership. And half of the time, we might not realize we are already leaders. We are leading our customers to seeing value. We're leading our employees um, to, you know, getting a happier, you know, existence within themselves. Um, walk us through why leadership really is important um, you know, within, within business, um, and why people should actually embrace leadership in their business. Yeah. Uh, you know, bang on in regards to, we, uh, I guess take, uh, that leadership role, but leaders are not necessarily, you know, I've always heard you're natural, you know, people are natural born leaders. I think, I think that in a, in, in a, is a myth. I think that if you want to be a, leader you need to learn what leadership actually is and how to lead um you might have leadership qualities that are innately within you i.e people like to follow you that's a good start for leadership <laughs> you know um obviously you have the authoritarian leader which is probably more like a manager there is a big difference between managers and leaders most people don't actually like people being managing them you know especially these days millennials and, and for those that have more experience that micromanagement people checking up on you all the time is definitely not a good way to manage um but leadership is really i guess taking like i was saying touching on before that extreme ownership of where you're at right now and especially if you're leading uh more than yourself and a sole trader well i i guess it starts with you you know the, the biggest person or you know the number one person you need to be able to lead is yourself if you can't lead yourself, it's going to be very, very unlikely you're going to be leading others. Um, and then taking, like I said, taking extreme ownership of where you are right now and actually where your organization or where your business is actually going to be moving forward in three, you know, three months, six months, 12 months, and, and maybe 10 years down the track, you know, um, where in regards to the worst 
financial situation for or the worst finances of that's one company. There are a few others outside of that, but one of the companies is is probably like I said in the worst situation. Probably by the time we finish the the rebuild of that company, it's probably going to cost me about a hundred grand to rebuild that. But in saying that, one of the biggest lessons out of that was not necessarily how we ended up in that position, but just, I guess, keeping myself accountable and keeping myself calibrated to the person that I wanted to become. I get really caught up in targets and results and outcomes and very, very goal oriented. Um, and when we set a goal and we say go, um, I'm off the, uh, I'm out the gate. And then what I've actually found in regards to leading people is that I haven't really found Personally, that many people that can keep up to, you know, my vision and, and the speed in which I can actually move forward. The problem is if you're leading people, let's say if you're going into battle and you're the first person to the front, um, you probably will need the rest of your platoon behind you very quickly. But if they're, if they're way back there, you're in a bit of strife. So <laughs> behind enemy lines by yourself is not really where you want to end up. So... So yeah, so you know, it's been a uh, definitely an awakening within myself, just in regards to um, who I need to be within within the leadership uh, of of my own business and the organisation, creating that vision of where I want to go. And I guess the worst thing as entrepreneurs, we're very good about creating the vision in our own head, but very bad at communicating that to the rest of our team, um, only because we're thinking about this from the time we go up to the time we, you know wake up to the time we fall asleep and then probably subconsciously we, we've probably got it running through our heads uh, on a few sleepless nights whether we know it or not so you know the communication and then the execution of that and instead of being results driven I'm looking for little wins along the way um, and that's been a huge sort of learning curve I, uh, even someone for myself that's been in business for for 10 years in several different industries so even the, and I don't think there's things out there that we don't necessarily know but every now and then, when you know, 2017, we came off our biggest year in history. Uh, and then the back or the start of the 2017-18 financial year from July to December was probably the worst in history. And it kind of literally disappeared like that. So, um, yeah, last year's, last year's result is history. It's what you do from then on that will determine, obviously, 2018. So, Do you think um, all of that has to do with the times that we're in in as much as people have sort of evolved, but we haven't really caught up um, to who they are uh, because, yeah. you know, the way we respond to communication, the way we respond to being told what to do and how to lead, like you mentioned earlier on that as an entrepreneur, you already have, you know, the ideas and the vision in your mind, but it's hard for you to articulate it to, um, you know, your, your, your other people are we now so desensitized as 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 people in as much as it's hard for us to understand things that seem normal to other people who are entrepreneurs good question um i think we just have to meet people where they're at the problem is and that comes down to different personalities if everyone's doing a, a disc profile profile before um, you know, I'm a high D backup I, but the high D comes out quite a lot. So, you know, for me as a high D, very driven, directional, uh, focused, you know, I don't like weaknesses in people, I, I, you know, those sorts of things to drop back to a level of, let's say, you know, are you okay? And in, in, in the values pendulum as well, back to that survival mentality. I feel like, what am I doing here? Do you know what I mean? Like, this is come on step up like get up you know what i mean They're like oh i just feel this blah, blah, blah. i was like what do you mean feelings what is that we're in business here this is not this is not crash where i you know scrub my toe and 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 need a need a bender like get up so so yeah so you know you got to meet your people where you're at but then bring them to up towards you you know um that that's as a leadership but and it is that constant calibration you know how me, I've got th literally three people that I speak to fortnightly just to check my energy to make sure I'm in balance of, of myself. And, and, uh, and I think if I don't have those people, you know, are they, you know, having a business coach? Yes, is important. If you're sort of uh, newer to the game or, or, 
even just someone to sort of voice your ideas off or this is what I'm feeling, you know, things are good, but you know, and it's just to go cool. And however, this situation, that situation, you need people that you can voice your, you know, thoughts and opinions. And honestly, most times as I'm speaking to these three people, most of the situations I can actually work out myself, but because I'm vocalizing it to someone else, I actually go, that was silly or yeah, I could have done that better or, you know, maybe I should call that person or, you know, those sort of things. So, you know, if you have a lot of experience in business, you know, I still think it's important to have your network and, and go from there. If you are new to business, yeah, find a coach that can put, allow you to move quickly through, through certain situations. So. Absolutely. One of your businesses is all to do with recruiting um, yeah. and figuring out, you know, how people can be placed in uh, jobs, et cetera, et cetera. So would you think that these days it's really, really important to hire for experience or is it important to hire for expertise? Well, I actually have built a sales company from zero to a uh, fairly decent size uh, and I've recruited everyone with no experience. The downside to that is that it does take time and the people that are coaching those people need to be very good. That's why I'm doing it all myself. <laughs> um, secondary to that, you need to make sure that if you are losing people and, and the worst thing of these days is people are very fickle about their job. There's not really much loyalty. People can get a, another job like that tomorrow. It's kind of things are too easy. You know, even divorces I've seen um, get divorced in the back of a, a coupon on Coles. You know, it's like $199 get divorced. It's like, wow, how easy can we make it? You know, if you want a relationship, you swipe right. It's, it's, there's, no, there's no groundwork. Out. There's, there's, no one needs to do anything for anything, you know. If you want anything in the world, you've got Alibaba and Amazon and eBay and it can be delivered within the week. So, so there's real no effort in, in, um, in anything in life. It can just be so instantaneous. And we kind of really, uh, I don't think it's a good thing, but that, that's like you were saying before, it is what it is. It's like saying, you know, in regards to the digital space, um, I don't. I don't need a website. No, you do. <laughs> and you need social. And you need social media platforms. And you need to be active enough to engage your audience. You know that you just need to. Oh, but I'm. But I'm a butcher. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and. People need cutlets. People need to like those cutlets on social media. Exactly. Or maybe you put, might put up recipes or maybe you might put up, you know, um, a special meat that you've got or special, like people want to be in touch with what you do and, and they want to know what you stand for. So, so, you know, um, in recruitment, I think there's probably, it's a two part system. It's also the candidate and what they're looking for. And unfortunately I think a lot of businesses actually don't know what they're looking for. So they're recruiting people but they're not really recruiting the right way because they don't really know who they're looking for. They don't have an overarching value proposition for the person to move into. So if I'm going to start, you know, in, in any business, what does the business stand for? What are the ethics of the company? What are the morals? What are the standards and what is acceptable? You know, I was, I was up at a, at a function on the Gold Coast and Keith Abraham was uh, speaking about, you know, we, we accept the standard we walk past. And I was like, whoa, that was good. Right. That, you know, so, so in businesses, we accept the standard that we walk past. And I was like, Hmm, how many businesses are letting standards slip by because they don't want to have that critical conversation or, or, and also they don't want to be that bad guy. Right. Because it's all about how people feel these days and, and you can't say anything to people because you might upset them. But if you have a, a set of company values, then, it's very easy to have those coaching conversations or those, you know, performance um, conversations because you're actually not living up to the company's company standards or company values. So it's not me talking about it as a manager. It's, it's the company. It's these guys here. And then if you start recruiting on those values and looking for those people that display those company values or at least have in an eight, uh, want to be those company values, your business is going to grow much, much further. So literally 2018, our whole recruitment platform has changed for the sales company that we, we've been operating for, like I said, six years. Um, and I only want to recruit people that I like. That's it. <laughs> I so just want to be around people that I like. You know, they're respectful. 
they're appreciative, they say please and thank yous, you know, they're the ones that open the door for everyone. That's the people that I want to be around. The, the profit will come because I know that I can coach really, really well. And so you got to make sure that your systems and processes in regards to coaching and, and the onboarding process is really, really good. But apart from that, why not be surrounded by people that you want to go to work with? You know, I'm not saying you need to have the best relationship with them outside of work and hang out with the pub and, you know, go on every single weekend and every holiday with them. But at work, if you're spending 8, 10, 12, 14 hours a day with them, yeah. you better enjoy their company. <laughs> absolutely. So you, you're absolutely saying right now it's better to uh, employ on attitude because you can always upskill them if they've got if the right attitude. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I'd rather recruit someone that has no skills, but a great personality, great right. attitude, good with people, good with my customers, good with me, I, as long as you have good coaching practices. Because if your onboarding process is hoping they're going to bring something to your company and they don't bring it to your company, that could be expensive. Right. I think that's where then the leadership um, fails that we were talking about because then you're trying to correct something that somebody is not. And that's where the clashes start coming in within, within the business. Now you have been um, back in the field, building your company um, that has been making nearly a six figure loss and you're building it into yeah. a multi-million um, juggernaut that it was. Walk us through what you actually are going to be doing and how you intend to, revamp that or how how how, how your, your your process is going to be like yeah so basically probably the height of the company 2017 we had about uh three staff excluding myself we had uh, nearly 30 contractors in regards to the sales and now we're sitting at myself plus one staff and about six weeks ago we had me and one other contractor or two other contractors so we've literally built in the company from zero. So the reason why I guess there was a lot of, um, we ended up having relationships within the office and that's not a, well, it is, it, it is a problem. <laughs> young people, the average age of the office was quite young. You know, there was um, someone's birthday out there that every single person in that photo was a, either someone that was in my company or that is in my company. And I was like, it's a very unhealthy environment. If everything you have is in one section, same thing if, if you're in a relationship with your you know, loved one and they are everything to you without them, you're nothing, you're in not a good spot, you know? Um, because I think that if that person left, your wholeness of yourself is, you know, your identity is with that person. And it's very easy, you know, as you become you know, parents and, or you've been with that person for a long time, um, you do can't, you know, you do, uh, coexist together, but you become one, but you still need to have your own identity. So the biggest thing for me, uh, what I'm going to start doing is uh, well, what I have been doing is actually just coaching people myself. And the reason why I'm so excited about it is because if I have 15 people in my company that think, talk, walk, act, sell customer service like me, I've got it. I'm, it's, I'm pumped. Do you know what I mean? Because once I start coaching and mentoring people, then their my mentality is passed on to the generation to generation. But if I've got 15 to start with, rather than just five, and then they start training and coaching themselves. But if I've trained 15 people myself, then I know that the whole company is going to be exactly the way that I want it to be, rather than you know someone's you know, shortcuts. And once you start bringing shortcuts into it, you really start to, you know, dilute the process. And, and that's where, especially in regards to sales and processes and, and systems, that's where the breakdown starts then. So, Yeah, that's the reason I don't like smart people because smart people are always trying to figure out the faster way to do things. And usually a shortcut is usually a wrong cut. Um, normally right. these days it comes with legal connotations you know so <laughs> yeah exactly well I, I basically you know i literally talk about all of my thought processes to the company consistently so i think if you take enough shortcuts you end up in the same spot but you've wasted all that energy you know 
And you're right. There, there is a shortcut in, in any business. Bloody hard work and doing the right things right. That's the shortcut, you know. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Now, you would notice, um, you know, Gillian, the, the year is almost just starting. And uh, if people would have put out, um, you know, their New Year's resolutions or painted them on a wall using red ink, it's only just drying out right now. What sort of advice yeah. can you give to people that are maybe <clears throat> going through their... Um, you know, start of the year, they're really trying to figure out how to, you know, strengthen their business, how to actually get out of whatever slump they might be in or to double up on whatever they did last year. Yeah. Uh, another saying that I've got is maximize your highs and minimize your lows, which basically means get to work. Because <laughs> if things are going well, then you should maximize that. If things aren't going so well, well, minimize those bottoms and maximize those highs. And then your average totally grows up um yeah you know you said that the year's only just started um i have a different view to that uh my year is already in march which means two years two months already gone and then if we you know i was looking at the calendar the other day i've got a short week next week with obviously the public holiday then there's some trips away then it comes into each still which is literally two and a half weeks away or three weeks then there's three more then there's two short weeks then there's another couple of weeks and then we've got Anzac Day on the 25th and then we have the last week and then it's the start of May. Now we're nearly halfway through the, halfway through the year. So <laughs> that's why my brain thinks. And that's Absolutely. not to put don't, any pressure Don't on. take that away from me. I'm still enjoying... <laughs> <laughs> I'm still enjoying my Christmas candy. Come on. <laughs> I haven't even opened up my Valentine's chocolate yet. Oh, wow. Well, you're so lucky you got some. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I know we're going to be doing a lot of um, this series um, of videos just to, you know, touch base, see where you are. And there's been a lot of value in this show today uh, because some people might not realize the, the way they hire people, that their leadership is imperative within the marketplace. They're either leading themselves, leading their employees and also leading their customer base and, you know, or leading the market. And some people don't take, you know, ownership of that, um, you know, position that they might have for themselves um, you know, within a business. So there's quite a lot that um, we're going to be talking about as we go along. And um, as you have proposed, um, you know, Julie, we could be meeting up every single month, um, you know, to, to yeah. discuss things that have happened, what's working, what's not, and you giving us, you know, details of your business. And so let's make this the initiation of the, um, you know, the, the Spartan group of videos that are going to be educating you in order for you to be, do, and have a uh, business that's profitable yeah. and enjoyable. Now, um, Julian, yeah. what would you say people should anticipate in the next month, um, you know, for the next video that we're going to be talking about? Oh, I'm not sure. I, 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 I guess the biggest thing, the reason why I, I reached out to you in the beginning was, you know, when you're going through business situations and challenges and, you know, slumps and peaks and plateaus and all those sorts of things, having someone else that's been there through it or is going through it kind of makes you realize that you're not alone, but also makes you feel like you're, you know, not, not, you know, sometimes it can be very, very isolated. You know, we used to own a, um, a retail store down here in Adelaide and, and no one wants to help you out. No one wants to see you do well. Everyone literally wants to put you out of business. And it's like, wow, that's, that's a horrible business environment. Seems that everyone's got, you know, maybe their house mortgage against the, the loan of the capital for investment for the property, uh, for, the, for the business. For the business. You know, all these, you know, so all those things. And, and sometimes when you hear someone's, you know, success story out of, you know, difficult times, it gives you a little bit of inspiration and, and probably a little bit of motivation. That's kind of like the, the value that I'd hope to bring. You know, on that be do have, that is the biggest, biggest thing that leaders miss. Absolutely. Yeah. And I really like the genuine, the rawness of, um, you know, you know, this episode really, um, because some people only want to be seen when things yeah. are going well, but you know, you yeah. took the, the, the leadership role of really showing people that listen, 
even though things might not be uh, going, you know, the way that you want them to, there's still lessons to be learned um, and there's still work to be done in order to be, do and have, um, you know, a business yeah. that's actually profitable and enjoyable. And, it, and it's only a season, you know what I mean? It's only, it's only a short time or maybe it's six months, or maybe it's two years or whatever, but, but at some point it's going to subside. But a true test of your character is not when things are good, how good you can be. And the end of 2017 would, would make an absolute, you know, fortune. That wasn't the true test of my character. The true test of my character is now. So if you can be happy and smiling and still lose 100K, well, that to me is, that, that to me kind of ticks the box and go, okay, now you understand what it's going to take to, to make the, you know, um, eight, nine figures or whatever you want to make, or whatever, maybe, maybe not that, that much for, for some people, maybe they don't want to make 150K or whatever, but that's going to allow you to generate the beginning because now you're worth it. You know? Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. And till next month, my man, let's see what you um, have in store for us. And I'm beginning to enjoy these segments that we have here. Love it. Appreciate it. Thanks, Prosper. Thanks, guys. Good.